When Russia invaded Ukraine, many people expected a speedy victory. Something that would be over in a couple days and suddenly we'd have a new status in the world. Something changed in European politics. It's been a couple weeks now and Russia still hasn't really taken any major cities. Ukraine's putting on a massive defensive line and Russia has yet to really get anywhere. This has surprised quite a few people and it didn't necessarily take me by surprise, but I was expecting Russia to have a quick victory. Why? Well, for starters, Russia has a very lackluster past when it comes to invading other nations. And it comes down to their absolute garbage list logistical train, something that many people have actually touched up on on YouTube. But today I'll be talking about it again because this is a current event and everyone wants to talk about it and give their own two cents because that is what we do here on YouTube. Yes, this is another video about the current conflict. Uh, it's something that's interested me for a while. It's a bit morbid to think like, oh yes, I'm very interested in the war that's going on in Ukraine. And it sucks. Like I said in my last video, this, this should not be going on. Like this is a terrible event. But we look at it and we like it's it's going on right now and there's things happening right now that we can learn from and that we can use and go back into the the books of history and to compare what happened before and what's happening now and sort of go huh this seems to be a standard it's an interesting thing to talk about and as long as we can understand that what's going on now is horrible and we want it to stop we can reasonably talk about it with a decently clear conscience now the thing that I would really like to discuss about today is specifically about the Russian logistical train. More or less, the history of Russian logistics when it comes to their military has been terrible. A lot of people like to make jokes about the Wehrmacht in it failing because the trucks couldn't get gas to the front lines because their logistical trains were so stretched out that we seem to forget that the Russians have, that, have had that same exact issue for centuries. Russia is not a nation with a ton of military successes. Yes, they've won quite a few wars, but a lot of that was after a long drawn out affair where they were invaded and the invasion killed the military. Of course, saying that General Winter won the war against the Germans is something that has been disproven time and time again. The Russian military beat the Germans. That's 100% accurate. General Winter killed Napoleon and the logistical problems inherent with such a large invasion from a Napoleonic era army killed Napoleon. That's what ended his military campaign in Russia, more so than the Russian military itself. Although the Russian military made great sacrifices to make the war not worth it for Napoleon and to take out as much as Napoleon's fighting force as possible to make his campaign even more miserable. We cannot discount the sacrifices made to stop Napoleon back in the 1800s. However, every single time Russia has gone to war, they've almost always started off on the wrong foot because of their logistical issues. And it has been hundreds of years and this problem still has not been fixed. And we are seeing it now with Russia getting trucks on trains, civilian trucks, and using it for military use. Every time a nation has had to use civilian trucks, unmodified, for helping their military, it has always been in a time of desperation. Look at the miracle on the Marne when they had the Paris taxis take troops to plug the gap and to then rush into the gap with the German lines and flank two halves of the German army and forced them to retreat, which started the trench warfare in 1914, leading to the race to the sea where the Belgians cut off the German army before they could properly flank the Entente forces, leading to four years of grueling trench warfare and eventual victory for the French and a reclamation of Auslas Lorraine. Think about that. They were desperate enough to use civilian vehicles. The last days in the Battle of Berlin, when everything was lost, the war was over for the Nazi regime. What did they do? They used civilian trucks to move supplies. They used antiquated vehicles out of museums to make a last ditch effort to stop the Reds. This is what happens when your nation is desperate and needs something to change in the course of a war. Desperation breeds these desperate choices. And to see this happening in Russia, where Russia is training in civilian vehicles to cart around their troops, shows that Russia was not prepared for a war to last longer than two days. It screams old Prussian doctrine, but to the worst degree. The idea that we need a quick and fast war to win, and we cannot fight a prolonged one, so we should focus all of our energy into preparing for the most, the, the most successful war in the shortest amount of time. However, Russia didn't think about a plan B. The Prussians always did. 
Russia figured that they would have Kiev overthrown, the government gone, with a new puppet regime in place within two days. And the rest of the fighting would merely be partisan activity. Not this several week long war of attrition that it seems to have broken down into. Yet that's what it is now. And Russia, completely unprepared, invaded at the worst time of the year to do so, in some of the coldest weather in March, and has no transport vehicles, has no supplies, has no way to continue the fight without changing something. And so here we are. In a conflict that bars very striking similarities to the Winter War, it becomes very easy to start comparing it to such, even though it isn't. What's very interesting about this conflict is that it really showcases the lack of initiative on the Russian military leadership to change the flaws within Russian logistics that have been evident and problematic within the Russian military for several centuries. Back during the Crimean War, for example, part of the problems that the Russian military faced and why they couldn't take out a petty force of French and British troops when on their own home territory was because of supply problems. The reason why Russia wasn't able to properly take out the Ottomans, no matter how many wars they fought with victories, was because of supply problems. The reasons why Russia couldn't properly exploit their victories during World War I and push forward into Austrian territory was because of supply problems. The reasons why the Germans were able to outmaneuver the Russians at, during the Battle of Tannenberg and strike a blowing defeat against the Russian military, which would eventually lead to Poland falling to Germany in just a couple years, was due to supply issues. The reason why Russia was off on such the... Uh, the reason why Russia got off to such a bad start during Operation Barbarossa was due to supply issues. Russia was expecting a German invasion at any moment, and they did not have their troops readied. They didn't have the proper supplies. Tanks didn't have enough shells. Plenty of times where tanks were holding back German armored columns, and they ran out of ammunition and had to abandon their tank. This is a common theme within Russia. Russia invades Afghanistan, and they have supply issues. There is nothing short of madness when it comes to this absolute insane, chronic problem of the Russian military throughout history, where they seem to never be able to do anything because they seem to never be able to have enough supplies. And yet they continue to persist with the same doctrine, trying over and over and over and over again to succeed doing the same thing and it never works. That is the definition of insanity, trying the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And yet they keep doing it. They keep on thinking it'll work this time. Some forgiveness can be given to the Russian military with this whole debacle in Ukraine, as they were expecting it to be over in two days. But they didn't plan for if it wasn't. They didn't have the right number of supplies for if it wasn't. Had they had properly supplied troops for if it didn't last two days, that's very likely that the Russian military would have already won. They'd be in Kiev by now. The Ukrainian government would have fallen. But they didn't. Russian troops have been captured with only two magazines, one of them already used. Russian soldiers are running out of gas. Some of that probably due to their own sabotage by punching holes in the gasoline tanks, as what's been theorized. But they're running out of supplies. There's reports of Russian soldiers surrendering in mass rather than risk freezing to death in their own tanks because there's not enough supplies to keep them alive. There's reports of Russians asking for food as they go through the invaded territory because they don't have right supplies. It reminds me of the Confederate invasion of Arizona. The thought that not only would it be a quick operation, but as they go through, they wouldn't need to bring a ton of supplies because they'd be supplied from the people. And I think that might have been part of the motivating factor for the Russian military strategy. We don't need a ton of supplies because as we go through Ukraine, our numbers will swell and we'll get free supplies from people because they support us. This whole idea of bad intel. It reminds me of that Confederate invasion. The Confederates thought they'd go through the Arizona territory, they would swell their numbers with new volunteers, they would gain all the supplies from the locals, and they would just push forward onto the west coast of California. And then that didn't happen, and they were beat back soundly, and they never tried again. That reminds me of what's going on, what's going on now reminds me of that. 
the Russians invaded, thinking that the people would help supply their army, and their army would march on its stomach. Napoleon showcased the problems with that back in 1812. And yet Russia thought that, oh, we defeated an enemy who was marching on their stomach. Let's do it ourselves and cross our fingers and hope that this would be a different situation. Russia, time and time again, continues to do this. The Russo-Japanese War is another great example of Russia going into a war without the proper logistical support for their militaries, resulting in defeat and national embarrassment. Every single time Russia goes to war, it seems, they're unable to properly supply their massive armies. World War I would not have even been a contest had Russia have proper logistical trains. The only time Russian logistics seems competent is when the Russians are getting pushed back onto their supply depots. And that's because they're getting pushed back onto their supply depots. Not because they have some logistical strength to them, but because they have the fighting happening at the supply depots at the factories making the material. Guess what? Germany, when they got pushed back to their supply depots, started fighting better and better supplied because they were on their supply depots. It seems incredible to think that you get pushed back onto your supply depots, you'll be better supplied. But that's what happens. And so we have a situation now where Russia is simply showcasing that they have not learned at all that they need to supply troops with proper supplies in order to have a military operation that they assumed that this would be a quick military operation that did not need supplies, and that if they did need supplies, they'd merely get it from the local population because obviously they'd be supported. Was this bad intel? Arrogance? I don't know. All I do know is that there's currently a war raging in Ukraine right now. Ukraine is fighting for its right to be a sovereign nation, and Russia seems to not be able to know how to fight a war. In 2022, with thousands of years of hindsight, it's incredible to me that Russia learned so much from the Winter War on how to fight a modern war. That they learned so much and were able to apply that in the early days of Barbarossa in order to stop the German advance. And they were able to learn from their failures of the early stages of Operation Barbarossa to fix a lot of those supply issues so they didn't really suffer that as much when they fought back and continued pushing forward. Now, they did suffer some supply issues, such as when they waited outside Warsaw as the Warsaw Uprising happened, allowing that to distract the Germans while they resupplied their troops. But they learned. And it seems like Russia decided to just forget all of that when they went to war against Ukraine. Supply issues are normal in war. America suffered it during the Battle of the Bulge, or right before the Battle of the Bulge. America suffered it in the Pacific. Nations that have been known for their logistical prowess have suffered logistical problems in conflict. However, none of these nations have had such a chronic issue with supplies as Russia has had. Russia doesn't even plan for logistical problems. Nations that have a chronic issue with supplies, like Germany, plan for it, or have planned for it in the past, and yet Russia seems to never learn its lesson. It's very interesting to see. Russia is bringing in civilian trucks because they do not have the logistical means to support their army. And it might spell disaster for the Russian military, if it hasn't already. Soldiers are surrendering to the Ukrainians in mass, um, as is being reported by the Ukrainian media, so take that how you will. But the war does not seem to be going very well for the Russians, and it probably will be over in the next couple months with Russia having to admit defeat. At least that's the hope. The hope is that that is what is going to happen. And the people who have committed tons of war crimes will be able to face punishment for what they have done. And maybe we can put Putin up against a wall and shoot him. That'd be lovely. A little bit of a shorter video this time. I know I've been releasing a lot of longer ones, but thank you guys for the support. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully this is going to be the last video on the whole Ukraine stuff for a while, and I can get back to just talking about World War I and uh, the things that I'm really, really interested in um, from that historical perspective. I've got a ton of new books. Um, I've got a ton of new things to talk about. And I'm really excited for the future of this channel since I now have a ton more time. And you'll get to see why I've been so busy here in an upcoming video once the weather decides to clear up. Thank you guys for the support. If you guys uh, want to get like a mug like this or something, I don't know, link to that shop is in the description. Um, link to my Patreon, I think I'm going to start actually being more active on that, will also be in the description as well, as well as the Discord, miscellaneous stuff. You guys can just look down there, see all the links, and see what you guys want to join or stuff. So, 
Thank you guys for the support. I appreciate it. Here's to some new content coming out soon. It's been a bit too long since I've done these, so I'm just sort of deciding to make videos on whatever I want to talk about, and we'll see how it goes. Thank you guys, and I'll be the Zan, and tschüss, my camarades.